extinguish fire with what? Fire. How can you get a woman just uh, getting mere grass then start burning her hands? We want to challenge the local communities to make use of the richer natural resources they have around. I think that kind of symbiotic relationship uh, could be encouraged. The Albertine Rift Valley is currently the area of focus but the entire people of Uganda has a ray of hope that will go a long way to elevate the contract of poverty. This after the discovery and subsequent drilling of the oil resource. Bulisa district is one of the areas at the heart of the oil exploration and a lot of oil related activities are going on here. The area is not only rich in the oil mineral resources but also registers a reasonable biodiversity. It's the home of flora and fauna biodiversity, habitat in Mashon Falls National Park, Mugungu Wildlife Reserve, and home to a variety of aquaculture recorded in Lake Albert. Sustainable use and management of natural resources in the Albertine Rift is the single most important factor that will help secure the region's globally unique biodiversity and ecosystems. However, discovery and developments of the oil industry, escalating population and therefore need for resources have been incentives to overuse and inappropriate management of natural resources in the Albertine Rift. But also, generally, this is the case in most other parts of Uganda. The people of Ulisa are mainly farmers. Practicing subsistence farming, some are cattle keepers while the rest are fishmongers. The soils in this area is over gardened and the soils are getting exhausted which is already affecting the harvest. This notwithstanding the challenge of land scarcity which is cropping up that has seen land conflicts on the rise attributed to population explosion. A wide range of conflicts are also being registered in Ibulisa. Communities neighboring conservation areas are in conflict with animals and game rangers. There are no clear boundaries between community land and the protected areas. There is more wildlife outside protected areas than inside. But Ua has done very well on the wildlife inside. You are not doing very well on the outside. Why are we having these reptiles moving around? They don't have anywhere because they find them in people's rooms, I mean, where the chickens are, of course, have engulfed a few of them. But why? Because we have encroached. It goes back to the environment. This road acts as a buffer zone between Bugung Wildlife Reserve and community land. People spend the entire day and night in these makeshift sheds, guarding their crops from raids by wild animals, but unfortunately, some have instead lost lives to charged animals. Now I'm having hippos fighting my people and we lose them every month. Crocodiles eating my people. Who authorities, some managers have been very reckless and they are staining our good relations with, 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 with the, 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 the park we host. In Nyamukota near Sonsio, people who are, who are on the other side, the western side, we you know the park. Women will not go out there by the, the elephant, by, by the buffalo, if you killed. That woman was killed. She was just in her field, the cotton field, but the, the, the animal came from that end to the shamba. Although community members prefer compensation for wild animal attacks, Uganda Wildlife Authority is not legally mandated to do so. The area to do compensation is very limited, is silent. Basically, it, it could be silent because either the finances are not available, the guidelines on how to compensate are not available. How much then are you going to compensate? Because somebody may say, my child was a, supposed to have been a president. How long are you sure that this person is supposed to have lived on? Because we cannot, evaluate, we cannot tell the value of this person. This has become a topical issue that has created unrest and solutions are being sought. What is puzzling the community is the continuous use of live ammunition and harsh treatment on part of the Uganda Wildlife Authority Rangers. The behavior of the Rangers is very bad, indeed very bad. 
How can you get a woman just uh, getting near grass, then start burning her hands because she, she never asked for permission? Is that a human? Extinguish fire with what? Fire. 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 Currently, these people who are killing elephants, do you think they kill them with pangas? No. They go with guns and more sophisticated guns than what we are carrying. Our concern is that. Uh, even when one is found poaching, he's not supposed to be executed or shot dead. Because if a person has gone poaching using a spear, he's a poacher. You have a gun and you are ten of you. Surely you cannot, you cannot fail to arrest him. And, and the law is clear. Poachers are tried in courts of law and given appropriate sanctions. A conservation organization, Uganda Wildlife Society, founded in 1998, is at the forefront of active conservation in Uganda, with members from academia, the public sector, the private sector, and the general public. Uganda Wildlife Society is committed to promoting the conservation of wildlife and environment across the country. Under the Ecosystems Alliance project, interventions are being done through community engagement to ensure that community around protected areas live in harmony with wildlife and biodiversity at large. The Alliance program finds the Albertine Rift region most suitable to address people's livelihoods, as these are derived from the rich ecosystems and biodiversity resources that are facing growing economic pressures. This is in addition to interventions of alternative livelihood for community-based projects that are income generating in nature. We realize that uh, there is uh, poverty. All these groups are really poor. And uh, we think that uh, one of the causes, one of the things that have kept them into poverty is that uh, they are really expectant uh, from the government. They expect handouts from NGOs. And uh, so we want to change their attitude uh, towards that so that they get empowered, they find solutions to their own problems. The project's sole purpose is to promote sustainable natural resource use and conflict resolution in Bolisa district. However, it can only be attained through community involvement and therefore the project fully engages stakeholders at all levels. Several dialogues and community engagements reveal that, indeed, the five resource user communities conflict on a daily basis either with one another or with the existing natural resources. 46% of Odisha's community practice crop farming and are currently at loggerhead with cattle keepers. While farmers accuse pastoralists of grazing into their gardens, pastoralists, on the other hand, blame farmers of killing their animals. We usually sleep while seeing at night because of our crops. Hmm? If you say that you will sleep exactly, you will find this, the, 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 the grazers, they will come and open your face, the, the cows enters inside, and then they will grab each and everything. We had vast piece of land, and uh, unfortunately, half is now cultivated, and the animals, when they come for their pasture, as they have been always used, they encroach. In their chambers. Then at times, those who are not good feeling, they cut some of the animals. Here, cattle keepers own large herds of cattle that are freely grazing from one village to another without a caretaker. But implementers of the project are optimistic that both communities and wildlife can harmoniously coexist while sustainably conserving the resource. Extensive. Joel Buyinza is the project officer, Uganda Wildlife Society Ecosystems Alliance project. For us, we are here to listen to them and do what they say. And to them, we want them to fully participate. Our role is to implement what they suggest because the project is about them. So we encourage the local communities to fully get involved and participate. Groups have been identified among communities who are being empowered, and one such group is Wutiava Parish Grass Users. Through a memorandum of understanding with Uganda Wildlife Authority, 
the women are able to harvest grass in a game reserve for domestic use. It is such opportunities that Uganda Wildlife Society is focusing on two as part of household income improvement while conserving for generation. Another area that is breeding conflict is the Lake Albert, whose waters are shared by two countries of Uganda and Congo. Because there are no boundaries and clear transboundary fishing laws, fishermen from the Congo side have been sighted fishing on the Ugandan side, and as a result, conflicts have often erupted. In Congo, they have a stocking system. Three months operation in the water, they fish. Three months, they get stocked, they get out. Whereas in Uganda, we are continuing. We hope to engage Congo, uh, especially in our public dialogues, because we think that is one of the ways, though the project doesn't stretch up to Congo. Fishing in Uganda is practiced throughout the year, while Congolese have fishing holidays. So, whenever it is a fishing holiday in Congo, Congolese cross into the Ugandan side. Away from the traditional style of livelihood, oil is now the latest natural resource being exploited in Bulisa district. The oil resource is being looked at with a lot of expectation. Some are looking at it as a source of employment, while the leadership are looking at the oil revenue sharing. It is widely perceived as a resource that has come to knock out poverty among the community, but their expectations are far near the reality. Uganda Wildlife Society, under the Ecosystems Alliance project, is generating discussion forums among a cross-section of society to collect their views, which will subsequently be used to lobby government as well as influence policy. This was one of the forums, and the people are given an opportunity to freely express their views on what their expectations are in the development of the oil industry within their vicinity. Accusations emerge that the government and oil companies have robbed them of their land as it was undervalued. <laughs> and others have not been compensated or their property destroyed where activities of oil drilling is taking place on private land. Others live in fear of long-term ailments resulting from oil extracts and fumes. Recently I concluded the flaring exercise in Kasemini 1. That flaring exercise left so many people really in a very big problem. The exercise uh, covered only the people in a radius of 300 meter, and uh, those people were paid. But see, the flaring exercise was really with a lot of problems. People were left in mayhem. If you take the trailers on the Bagita, However, the project officer, Ecosystems Alliance, Joel Boyinza, advised the community not to only complain about oil discovery, but rather focus on the untapped opportunities for income generation. He says the project is to mediate between all warring parties and also calls for a joint utilization of the natural resources in a conservative manner. In trying to avert all this, the Ecosystems Alliance project is stepping up skills development training for existing groups in five resource user communities of Ulisa district, with the resource used sustainable skills and technologies. Crop farmers have received indigenous tree planting techniques that will enable them combat climate change effects. People with special needs are not left in isolation either. He said he has understood the way how we sat here. We were trained how to maintain our land and how to keep our uh, crops and how to maintain our trees around here. So he knows that he will grow strong in his home and by planting trees around his home so that to avoid uh, uh, wind to destroy his land. Nursery beds are being developed that will supply communities with relevant tree species. We want to make Bolisa green again, full of the vegetation. 
and of course in the face of uh, uh, oil exploration we hope and climate change we hope that replanting is a timely intervention in Ulisa. Wildlife resource dependent communities had an opportunity of knowing the alternative livelihoods and sustainable harvesting of materials in wildlife protected areas guided by memorandum of understanding between communities and Uganda Wildlife Authority. We want to challenge the local communities to make use of the richer natural resources they have around. For example, um, the park. Still, we would want to create a link between Ua and the, the local communities because we believe that the local communities, for example, can supply uh, handcraft uh, materials to the park other than uh, Ua getting them from Kenya and Kampala. There is a lot of materials for crafts which are in the park and are no longer in the community. I think that kind of symbiotic relationship uh, could be encouraged. It cements relationship. It could make the people the custodians of the conservation area, as opposed to the militaristic approach. The session was crowned with conflict resolution strategies that will see both wildlife and communities live in harmony. Conflict resolution was also applicable to the fisher folk of Lake Albert. The use of appropriate fishing gears is among the solutions reached on. Keeping large herd of cattle is considered prestigious rather than productive among cattle keepers and are now being advised to focus at quality other than quantity for them to attain economic benefits. We want people who can come and help us in planning. In our parish here, sincerely, people are not well. No trees, no pasture, no green pasture. You just see just the sand only, showing that it, 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 this one has caused a lot of heat, yeah? a lot of sunshine, a lot of uh, the environment, the climate is not good because no planning. So when the Wildlife Society comes in to assist us in planning and to, 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 to make our environment look good, that's very wonderful. We have welcomed this program in this Sabu County very, very much because we have learned a lot from them and they have known our pro problems. The intervention it has been fair and the training we have got, it's good. And we expect, according to what we have heard, to best the best because they will link us with these people whom we have not been on good terms, then we achieve the best if there is uh, resource sharing. Throughout the trainings and dialogues, Uganda Wildlife Society under the Ecosystems Alliance project sought to promote communities' ability to sustain their livelihood in a conservation manner.